Hey YouTube, it's Sebastian, KF5 OBS. A while back I received an interesting email from a college student who indicated that he was very interested in RF, particularly microwave communication, but he was more or less complaining about that it's nearly impossible, in his opinion, to do anything in the microwave bands without the proper funds. He was uh, particularly listing some price examples of Rode and Swartz and Edgeland gear that in his opinion was required to actually do anything sensible in this sort of frequency range. So this video is going to show you that this is absolutely not true and you can on an amateur level achieve really nice things if you just know how. What you see here is a test setup that I created. Um, that had the condition to be relatively inexpensive and was supposed to use things that you can either acquire for cheap on the surplus market via eBay or other platforms or you'd already have laying around in your lap ideally anyway. I have a 10.4 gigahertz that's 10,400 megahertz gun plexer set up to generate a, uh, a single constant uh, continuous wave single tone signal and I have a receive setup that down converts this into the uh, range of my spectrum analyzer and my oscilloscope. Now of course I could uh, break out a spectrum analyzer that's intended for this frequency range but again this is not the purpose of this video. Over to the right you're seeing a spectrum analyzer that's uh, it's an Atten one there, there are some uh, some different brand ones. They're based. They're all the same on the internal. They're as basic as it gets. You can get them for around five hundred dollars on eBay, and uh, they cover from anything from I think it's nine kilohertz. I don't know the bottom edge, but the top edge is around one one point one gigahertz. So far, far away from the ten gigahertz that we do need. Same with the oscilloscope. Now the oscilloscope is not a great example for for a budget test setup but it's a 200 megahertz oscilloscope that's all that matters because that bandwidth is again not nearly big enough to what we need but like you can as you can see both the spectrum analyzer and the oscilloscope with the use of a FFT transform are showing the 10.4 gigahertz tones on their display so let's reposition the camera and have a little look at how exactly I set this up Let's start on the left. This right here is a horn antenna for 10 gigahertz that's fed by this little gun plexer here. Like I said earlier, you can buy those for really cheap on eBay. I mean, the price varies. I don't know what I paid for this. I want to say they were around uh, 10, 15 bucks, definitely less than 50 bucks a piece. And uh, well, they like right now, we're generating a 10.4 gigahertz signal. It's coming out of the end of the horn antenna and it's going right into this little horn and via this uh, waveguide to coaxial transition into a mini circuits mixer and let's start with that section like I said you can get the gun plexer on eBay no problem same goes for the horn antenna and the waveguide transition it may sometimes take a little bit of patience to find the sort of stuff on eBay for cheap you'll always find it but for cheap is just a different condition that we have set here but if you're a little bit patient, you can find this stuff on eBay, no problem. This mixer is something I, I put uh, on a standard FR4 material. Uh, it's, it's a mini circuits uh, mixer of some sort. Now FR4 is, is less than ideal for such high frequencies. But as you can see in the setup, it's working. And that's really all that matters for us. So we're having this uh, continuous tone fed in the mixer. What we also are feeding into the mixer is uh, a signal coming from this multiplier. You may be familiar with my ADF 4351 evaluation board. I used it in so many videos that if you're a follower of this channel, you'll have seen it before. We're generating a 2.55 gigahertz signal and feeding it into this times four multiplier. Accordingly, the output is at 10.2 gigahertz mixed with our 10.4 gigahertz signal coming out of the the uh, gun plexer we're of course expecting to see an IF at about 200 megahertz and 200 megahertz gets us well within the range of what even cheap spectrum analyzers
can handle and the same goes for an oscilloscope. Most oscilloscopes nowadays have a very very usable a fast Fourier transform so if you do not have a spectrum analyzer don't worry about it the FFT is pretty usable for your purposes here of course uh, you know a high-tech spectrum analyzer that directly measures at the target frequency would be ideal but again the topic of this video was how to do that on a small budget okay and uh, that's pretty much all of the magic now let's talk about those parts uh, as far as the mixer and the multiplier are concerned, uh, goes the same as for the waveguide transition. You will find those on eBay. A uh, times four multiplier that falls exactly into this frequency range uh, is relatively raw, uh, rare, but if you look around, you will always find something that's close. There are YIG oscillators that you can buy for cheap that uh, can generate signals at around 10 gigahertz directly without any problems. I think they're available for less than 100 bucks. So you can eliminate this entire section, uh, including the multiplier, and feed this directly into a mixer. Finding a mixer for this frequency range on eBay is really easy. Just uh, look for mixers in the gigahertz range and you will find something that's suitable for getting the job done. There's really no black magic behind that. All right, and uh, right now I'm using the little mini circuit splitter to get the signal both on the uh, the Atten spectrum analyzer and uh, on the uh, the Croy oscilloscope. Let's go back to the Atten one more time. I didn't really tilt this very well. You can see the the tone right there on the display, the single tone. If I put my finger in front of uh, the uh, waveguide antenna, you see a bunch of wiggling around on the display. It's because this particular gun oscillator is not particularly stable. Going back over to the LeCroy, you're seeing the same picture there. Now the settings aren't the same. The span is much bigger on the LeCroy, so that's why you're seeing a much sharper peak, plus the FFT has a much smaller resolution bandwidth than this cheap Atten spectrum analyzer, but the principle is the same. So if you have, a, have an oscilloscope with any frequency range, it really doesn't matter if it goes up to 200 megahertz, 500 megahertz, if it's just 100 or 20 megahertz, it does not matter as long as the, the, the bandwidth you want to look at isn't larger than the bandwidth of your scope. So if you just want to look at a 20 megahertz segment, at 10 gigahertz, it's perfectly fine to use a 20 megahertz bandwidth oscilloscope. It's not ideal, but you can do it, and that's all what we want to talk about right now. So again, go out on eBay, find surplus military material. This is mostly where these mixers are coming from, where those multipliers are coming from. Uh, those gun plexers are mostly coming from from radar guns, speed gun type type equipment and you can get them really really cheap on eBay this is very easy another thing that's of course an issue is measuring frequencies uh, you can't really accurately with this method determine the frequency of your signal that's coming into the mixer unless you can guarantee that this section is very accurate now with my setup with the multiplier of course I know that this signal generator is relatively accurate so I can measure the frequency coming out of the mixer just at 10.2 gigahertz and I know what came in with a, with a great degree of certainty however if you're taking a YIG oscillator or anything like that that directly oscillates at 10 gigahertz you may not have that luxury but it's no problem all you need for that is a power sensor that works into the frequency range you want to look at and you can find these type of uh, uh, diet uh, power detectors on eBay also for maybe 10 bucks a piece. What else you're gonna need is a waveguide frequency meter like this HP frequency meter for your intended frequency range. 
Now I don't know where my 10 gigahertz one is, it's somewhere around here, I can't find it. I haven't used it in a long while because I have means of measuring 10 gigahertz directly. This one is made for 24 gigahertz. The way this works, and I'll show this in a different video, is you feed your unknown signal in here and put a coax transition over here and put your power detector on top of that at the coax connection and measure the voltage coming out. And you'll gradually tune through all the frequencies until you see a sharp dip in the voltage coming out, i.e. you're going to see a sharp dip in power, that's what you're actually observing coming out of this meter and that's your frequency and if you look at the scale you can really read frequencies down to about 10 megahertz accuracy and that's pretty pretty decent for such high frequencies and those are available for under a hundred dollars also for various frequency ranges like i said your start out band for you know, for microwave communication will most likely be 10 gigahertz so that's often wr90 waveguide and for that frequency range you can also find power detectors that are already integrated in the waveguide so you're just going to put that at the end of your waveguide power uh, not your power meter, this uh, frequency meter that I just showed you and you can get a very good setup for, for really a few hundred dollars without a doubt, no problem. 24 gigahertz is the next band where you're gonna find lots of surplus equipment on the on the internet, particularly eBay again. Um, they are gun oscillators for 24 gigahertz and you can always work with multipliers, no problem. So that was just a really short video, quick overview of what you can do. And this was really just an example. I mean, that's one thing of, of really many things that you can do on a budget in the microwave range. And you don't really need to know a lot of stuff about microwaves either. This is a perfect setup to experiment, to look at stuff, see how it works, see what happens in your frequency domain. If you, if you tweak something, if you mess around with the screws, they're tuning screws and those and those gun oscillators you know, to tune your, your coarse frequency and the fine tuning happens with a voltage. So uh, if you can see this over here to the side, I have this little 10 turn pot, little voltage regulator, it's a standard LM317 and I have a voltmeter sitting there in the back measuring the voltage applied to the gun diet. And um, as another thing, by the way, if you've never played with gun diets, I'll make another video on this too. There's a third connector here, it's a mixing diet. It mixes the uh, oscillator signal with any signal that comes in and outputs the IF right here. What this does is, if you move your hand in front of this, obviously you're going to create a Doppler effect with the 10 gigahertz signal coming in. And you're going to get a voltage here that basically represents this, uh, this Doppler change. So it's very interesting for, for speed measurement applications and that's what those uh, gun plexes are often used for. Either to detect a person walking up to a door to open the door or to actually, uh, well, develop a speed trap. That's what use, what's used in those. And they're really basic, very simple. Uh, it really takes a lot of effort to break them. If you do, they're really cheap, so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day.